Okay, this is Atto Tahan from the uh, Ethiopian Wetland Society who works with the Sustainable Land Use Forum and he's going to explain how this hedge was put into place and what the hedge is actually doing. This is the wetland, this is a vertebral fishing plant on the hedge while protecting soil erosion. In these areas the soil is very severe initially while we are starting. But within a short period of time the soil starts to, the land, the structure becomes stabilized and the erosion becomes stopped and the land makes at least one meter interval of just stabilizing the soil. And even so, there is open place within the vetiver. It, the root system of the vetiver can protect soil erosion and it can be stabilized very well. And the land productivity increased from time to time and the farmers are happy with this. Okay, now, um, how long has this hedge been in place for, do you know? Yeah, just seven years old. Uh -huh. And it has been just uh, the grass harvest one a year, once a year, and it has been already established. And really, after five, six years, the land becomes a good bench. Okay. Now, can you point out where the first line was planted? Was it at the top or at the bottom? Just yes, has been planted at the top of the other, at the bottom of the. Okay. So show, show me on there. Point to just it. Just it has been planted here. Right. And then gradually it's expanded. It's stabilized very yeah, well. Yeah. So in other words, it, it creates its own terrace riser. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And it holds the uh, fertilizers and nutrients and soil above there. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And we will get somebody to stand next to you and we'll show them how, how much silt has, uh, sediment has been built up there. Just one moment, I'll put it on hold. Uh, sediment, the soil is built up behind a bed of a hedgerow. And as in, case, in this case, it's just under a meter, which is really quite remarkable for a biological system. There's no engineering taking place here, and uh, it's just uh, nature's way of using this extraordinary plant when it's grown as a hedgerow to build up and hold soil sediment and then runoff. Now the runoff, uh, we get a lot of um, r rainfall here, over a thousand millimeters, and most of this runoff stays um, on, on the surface in the beginning, and then when it hits a hedge, it builds it floods back behind the hedge and then infiltr infiltrates down into the groundwater. It's very interesting. If you look here in the background behind Atatahani, uh, there you can see how actually this, uh, this um, terrace has, has really become quite flat. And that's very important because that in again reduces the amount of, of runoff. And it becomes a very stable platform for farming. Thank you very much. This is a, a photograph of just one clump of vetiver standing alone in the farmer's field. I don't know why it's there, but uh, it gives you an idea of what the clump looks like as a, a, single, a single plant. The thing about vetiver grass is that when you plant it close together, as we've shown, they, the clumps grow together and you get this continuous filtering barrier. In this shot you can see where part of the hedge has been cut, as all along here. And farmers here use the, the, the grass as thatch, they use it as mulch, they use it as mulch for their coffee, they use it for mattresses, because one of the things it does, it keeps insects away from mattresses, so we don't have any lice. That's another health problem which has been resolved. Another thing in very windy conditions, this bed of a grass hedge, as you can see here, uncut, can create a very nice windbreak for small seedlings and things which are trying to grow. The farmer, as you can see, can plow right up close to this hedgerow, He's not losing virtually any land at all. And uh, whereas using the engineered structures, which have been common for years in Africa, it all came in through the Western system of uh, contouring, those hedgerows, uh, those contours, um, do not recharge waterways, uh, wa uh, groundwater. In fact, it takes water off the land, and the water moves sideways on a structured system and goes into waterways, often causing erosion. In this system, all the water running off this land hits these hedges, spreads out, loses their velocity, and then because of the very deep root system which can penetrate hard pans, and there are plenty of hard pans on these soils because they've been cultivated for decades, breaks through the hard pan and a lot of this water then goes down and, and is recharging the groundwater. As a result, we're getting sometimes as much as 70% reduction in rainfall. At this time of climate change, where droughts happen very regularly, 
and where there's real problems with water, this grass could solve many of Africa's problems. These sort of soils, they're volcanic soils in western Ethiopia, if not protected will lose up to 40, 50, 60 tons of good soil every year. Using the vetiver system, which are these hedgerows, aligned on the contour, the soil loss is reduced to as, li as little as maybe two or three tons per hectare per year. Could even be more, probably 100% when you have a whole series of hedgerows, as you can see here. Crop yields are significantly improved. Uh, farmers tell us that their yields go up by as much as 50%. This is because there is improved moisture in the soil profile and also because nutrients are retained, they're not lost. And this grass, remarkable grass, is able to, because its deep root system, is able to bring up nutrients from deep down in the soil profile, which most plants cannot reach and cannot use and convert them into nitrogen and phosphate which comes up with a leaf, is in the leaf and uh, can be uh, used as mulch to replenish the organic matter in the farm field. Another potential benefit of this plant is its use for handicrafts. It makes a very good resource for handicraft material and sooner or later we're going to find out that it is a very good carbon sequester because of its deep root system and its ability to keep carbon in depth in the soil. Go ahead and got it on. Here we have uh, Mr. Dabila Dinka of the St Sustainable Land Use Forum. He's been involved with Vetiver for over 20 years now and he's going to tell us a little bit about the background and how this came to be in place. Over to you Dabila. We are now in a place called uh, Sombo, it's a village. It's one of the concentration areas uh, where Machine for Machine uh, established uh, vetiver for uh, soil and water conservation. And uh, as you can see, it has very well done its, its purpose. Uh, now Machine is not dealing with it, but I am now working for a sustainable land use forum. With the forum, uh, we don't actually directly implement like Machine and for Machine used to do, but we identify best practices for sustainable land use and then promote throughout the country. So what we are now doing is we have identified whatever as the best practice for sustainable land management and we are trying to promote it through uh, workshops, through training and so on. So with, I think that whatever system is the best solution for uh, Ethiopian land management system. Thank you, Dabila. Now we're going to probably move on to another another site. But this is a very good site for those who can see. You can see it over the other side of the hill there, across the road. It, the slope there is at least a 20% slope. And if this vetiver wasn't here, it would be, over time, it would it turn into some form of wasteland, probably, become very infertile and uh, non-productive. With the vetiver system, and if they use uh, minimum tillage and things like that between the hedgerows ultimately you build up great fertility and they'll be able to grow many other crops I hope hopefully some uh, um, perennial crops as well here's a clump of standalone vetiver it's a it's interesting it's it's green totally green here and the, the reason for that is its feet the the, the uh, the roots are very close to water. There's a, if you look down there, there's a small irrigation channel. So, uh, but it's a nice clump of grass. It's healthy grass. And up here, of course, it's a little drier, and uh, the leaves, uh, the, the tips of the leaves, are suffering a bit from drought. But inside all that is this green leaf. In many parts of Ethiopia, where vetiver is grown, the only green plant at this time of year is vetiver.